Hey guys, what's shaking? Welcome back to the RC Spark Studio. Here I am in shop. YouTube Gold uh, Season 3 is now in full effect. Uh, and uh, we're, we're well into the season now doing our mining. Uh, and uh, shout out to Shroot Farms here. We just finally got a season uh, of something called The Office here in Canada. It's a great show. It's about this paper company uh, uh, and a guy named Michael and his assistant uh, to the manager, Dwight Schrute. He has a, a beet farm. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it's pretty cool. You guys should check it out. Hopefully they do more seasons. Um, but I have been uh, working on the gold mine and I actually figured since everybody enjoyed the uh, excavator build, the, the big Johnson project, the CAT 374FL, which stands for f***ing large, uh, it is a big excavator that we would want to continue checking out the lineup of Lesu products. Why not? Uh, and so I went all in. I basically, my loan is like all the way up to here, but I'm sure the mine site will pay off in the end if we get enough guys digging enough gold with enough machines. Because like I said before, we had just finished season two of Gold Rush in Canada here, uh, where Todd Hoffman showed me that the more equipment that you get, the more gold you're supposedly gonna get. So hopefully that turns out for us. So I uh, got a new wheel loader. Let's have a look at what's inside the box. Boom! And here it is, the uh, really dope A0001, well, triple zero, I guess. From Lesu. This is a Lee Bear wheel loader. This reminds me a lot of a Gropner wheel loader I had. It was a Lee Bear years ago for those people that actually remember the show from back in the day uh, when I was actually prospecting in a creek with it with chains on the tires. But I'm excited about this, especially because of the proportions. I want to see how it lines up against the other wheel loaders we have. Uh, and look at this. Transmission using Lesu high torque second gear transmission to ensure that heavy and poor road conditions can play their best power. New round of planetary reduction gearbox equipped with remote differential lock function for your control to bring more fun. So locking differentials and a two speed transmission. I just did all the translation for you. Ah, look at that, nice. So I guess it's showing us the different scale accessories here or features I should say which is a nice ladder, the cab looks plastic, and this looks pretty much identical except for the bucket. That looks pretty gnarly. Hello. This is the new version of this, so I'm very excited to know exactly what's inside those axles. Hello. Oh, no, look at that. There's more brass rams. Wow. So normally I notice that what they do is they keep everything unpainted so you can paint it the way you want. But I think I'm going to paint it exactly how I have how they have it on the uh, on the on the box. Beautiful. Look at that transmission. Focus up there. There's where the motor is going to mount up. There's the gear right out to the output drives so nice okay let me lift this out and we'll put it on the table for you to see boom like that you know how organized i am and check it out hello hey drop the beat shrewd farms what did you say it is it i haven't even showed them the parts yet it is kind of small though isn't it Looks Look at like that a chastity belt for a man. <laughs> I think there's a, a clear problem with that. Well, it wouldn't work very well. No, it doesn't work very well. <laughs> but, like, you get the attachment. Never mind. <sighs> Look at the size of the bucket compared to the other loaders. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah. It's Why is it so little? Look at the wheels. These are tinier, hey? What scale hey? is this? One fifteenth scale oh. compared to one fourteenth. Uh, or one twelfth is now, what, kids, is what we see. Now, kids, because you've been out of school for a while, what that means? Yes. Is because those vehicles themselves are very big. And that proportion of change of one degree is quite significant. It is. It makes mm -hmm. it look a little bit on the smaller side, but nonetheless cool yes. because we could always have a smaller wheel loader you around the site. Cool yeah. Fractions in RC. Oh, hey, I'm a nerd. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> 
All right, now what you're about to see is actually amazing. I took every piece out from every area of that box and laid it out. And I have to tell you, after looking at the top picture of the box, I was shocked because there was only three or four pieces of plastic. Look at this thing. Look at that. None of that is 3D printed. This is all metal. The Gropner one, the Lieber Gropner one I had, the whole top of it was plastic. Every single one I've seen before was plastic. That was always my fear, is if I ever rolled the machine, I was always going to crush the top. And look at this, this was something I broke on the other one right away. That top bar that's all around, that was made of plastic as well. No more problem with this. That is super, super cool. I thought for sure that that was a plastic uh, uh, cab. This is quite a, a nice one as well. It's got a good weight to it. Let's see here. There's those steps. And one thing that it'll strike me is same, or it'll strike you the same way it struck me was, watch, watch the, the metal work back here. Look at right, look at this. For the radiator. For the grill, I should say. And then the same kind of quality when I go through, where's that other piece? I was, oh yeah, look at this. Same kind of metal work. Look at that, oh, got a good focus on it. I am in love with that. Yeah, it's a little bit bent, but that's like, it's just such a thin piece of metal. I can bend that back, no problem. Plus it adds character to the loader. So cool. This is going to be an insanely cool cleanup loader. Look at this when I go across. These might be my favorite part of all because when I lift them up, they are exceptionally heavy. Big, solid pieces right here. This is actually going to make a huge difference in the stability of the loader itself. Listen to this. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I knocked a piece over over here. Not a big surprise though, because that's the way it, it reverberates through the table. If I could only tell you how much it weighs, if I had a scale here, that would be helpful. Oh, I do have one. Here we go. In grams, zeroed out. Dude, if I had that much in gold, that would be amazing. There we go. 41, <laughs> 416 grams tells you how heavy that is by itself. So four of those, here are the new axles. Look at all the scale bolts. This here is actually how you lock and unlock the differential. So it's going to have a cable. This is on a return spring that actually will help you lock the differential. And why would that be important in a wheel loader? Well, while your wheels, if you had open differentials, because you have to articulate to turn, right? When you have a, a, an articulating machine, the outside wheel has to move uh, like a longer distance than the inside wheel. But if it was locked all the time, it would be very difficult on the gears. So why would you want to have the option of locking it? Well, the option is there because if you want to have traction when you're moving forward into pay uh, and you want all four tires to lock up so you can actually have uh, a nice full bucket uh, load full of pay dirt. Now, don't get me wrong, this bucket isn't super small. It it is definitely on the smaller side, uh, but it, you know, it looks like it's going to hold, mm, is it the width of one king can? I would say so. This is almost the same width. Let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the, the FL. There we go. That's beside the cat. So it is about an inch or an inch and a quarter wider than the cat bucket itself. Here's a Tobias breaker bucket. This is aftermarket bucket, it's a little bit there. And then of course, this is for the big Komatsu that I have, but the Komatsu itself is just a, a, a monster. So this will have its place on the mine site for sure, especially being made out, like out of all metal. I think that's the most appealing part to it, a, a part about it for me. Now moving on, we've already seen the, the uh, transmission. There's the motor. It looks like they've actually gone ahead and done some branded motors themselves. We go down to the ESC. The ESC here, this is the brushless, so this is going to be for the small hydraulic pump. Uh, if you guys watch me put together the hydraulic forklift by Lesu uh, for Loading Kings, you would notice that this is similar, if not the same 
same motor and pump. It is the same motor. Here is the small hydraulic block. This is the valve block. This is going to have the, uh, the in and return uh, for the hydraulics, of course, to lift the arm and to move the bucket. Uh, as well, as you can see here on the inside, those valves actually have these little valve horns right here. Ah, there, that's a good focus. And this runs into these little servos. All the servos are supplied. These are probably, what, little nine grammers? I love these brass rams. I really do. I think they're gorgeous. I think, again, I'm going to leave these brass. I'll have a whole series of lessu uh, of uh, hydraulic equipment, but the steampunk look of it is just too killer. I think this is going to, you know, like when it tarnishes, it's going to look super cool. And look at this. This is just a fat but short little ram. <laughs> yes, look at the detail of it though. It's just fantastic. And of course, the soldering job looking flawless. Hopefully better luck with this one. Uh, I do have a, a replacement hydraulic ram on the way uh, for my big FL. For those that were wondering about that, Lesu has, a, you know, for me, it's been amazing. I just email them. Their customer service is pretty darn good. But it is in China, so it can be a little bit of a challenge. You know, I get an email response maybe within 48 to 72 hours. Now, here is the brushed ESC. This is going to be um, for the actual movement of the machine for that brushed motor right there. Now, the only thing that's kind of frustrating with this, you can see it's a RAIN 320 amp. There's just no way. I don't know how they're saying that. This is the spec right here, and it does say that. It says 60 amp and 320 amp, but all of this is in another language. I'm going to think it's Chinese. There's no English provided at all. But this is a very straightforward, inexpensive ESC. You can see here on the side, if you guys end up getting this, that there are two switches. Uh, just make sure if you're using LiPo or nickel metal hydride. And then if you want forward, brake, reverse, or forward and reverse, or forward and brake, there is a toggle switch up top for you there. Now, is that all of the amazing stuff? I couldn't cover it at all uh, in just that little amount of time. But look at this. These are the safety rails that come here. I believe these are all metal as well. I can't confirm that. Yes, I can. It is all metal. And here are the only pieces of plastic I was shocked to see that there was so little. Perfect clear uh, plastic for the front and back windshield. These don't have that weird purple or blue tint that I've seen on other uh, windows uh, or other clear plastics from manufacturers, so I'm glad to see that. And of course, here is the side window. Now look over here. This is for the door. Even the doors are metal, my friends. So I've got some more hinges to do. I've got a ton of painting uh, off camera to do here because this will take some time. I, I really do take dedication in my painting uh, and make sure to go slow and do very small coats. Now, like I said, I'll probably do the color I saw in the box. I like the orange and the white uh, scheme and I think that'll look pretty sharp on the site with the rest of the stuff. Well, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing today. Of course, leave me a like click if you like uh, me doing these build videos because it does help me uh, understand what you guys want to see next. Of course, everybody that's not into heavy duty equipment, stay tuned because I do have new projects uh, and new things to unbox for you in the coming days. Don't worry, I've been planning for you guys as well. Uh, and of course, for the viewers that do love builds like this, make sure to tune in next time to watch me realize that I've done a whole bunch of parts backwards and I have to undo it all just to do it again just like in every build video. Guys have fun with the hobby as always and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have fun with RC or if you're like me stay inside and pretend to know how to build one.